Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode where there's a slight change of schedule because today we've got to take on La Liga Getafe. Obviously, you guys want to know why we're taking on Getafe, so I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Since you were last here for the loss to Almeria and the 4-1 win against uh, Sevilla Atletico, we have gone on to play three games and won all three of them, including a huge 8-6 victory against Rayo Mahada Honda in the Copa del Rey first round. Either side of that, we have won two league games, 2-0, uh, both of them. Raul Juni get himself on the score sheet three times in those two games of Randy Schneider scoring the other one. But the game you all want to know about, I put it on Twitter the other day as well, because it was absolutely mental, is this 8-6 victory against Rayo Mahada Honda. It's pretty mad, as you can see. Uh, we scored first, and then they scored four, and then we scored two, and then they scored one, and then we scored another one, and then they scored one, and then we scored two, and it went to extra time, and then we won 8-6 in extra time overall. It was mental. Raul Jr. scored four, Martel Telecrossdale got a hat-trick, and Kike picked up the other goal. It would have been a great one to do on camera if the episode was wanting to be in half an hour long or something like that, because it took a long time to get through the game. But we came through. Uh, Rayo Mahada Honda are in the division above us as well, so I was pretty happy with how we played overall. Obviously, winning that means that we got through to the second round of the Copa del Rey, and that is against La Liga side Getafe, the team that bought Randy Schneider offers and, of course, loaned us back to him for this season. So this is a bit more of an interesting game. Not just is it, you know, a giant versus a lower club like us, but it's also a bit of a grudge match for Randy Schneider. But we will get to that very shortly because there are a few things to talk about. First of all, the league table. We've won two games in the league since you were last here. So we are still top of the league table, as you can see, with Raul Jr. now second in the goal stats. Of course, you'd already know who is second in the goal stats if you checked out the One Football app. They're sponsoring today's video, as you have done for the past few videos as well. On there, you can go into different leagues and you can see all the stats for different leagues, including things like top goal scorers, top assists and average ratings and things like that. It's a great app to get all of the live up-to-date fixtures and results and scores from all the games around the world, including this division if you wanted to, the Spanish second division B if you wanted to, but also divisions that might be a bit more interesting to you, such as the team you support or the team you don't support. I I'm not, I'm not sure I was going with that one. Either way, they're sponsoring my channel at the moment, so massive thanks to OneFootball for all their help and all their support on my channel at the moment. You can download the app in the top line of the description, and I would very much appreciate it if you did. In terms of other things that have happened since you guys were last here, uh, two more players have been recalled from loan. Uh, Roger Martinez, who made eight appearances, which at the time was about half the games we've played. Yes, they were all substitute appearances, but eight appearances nonetheless. And then Marcos Fernandez was also recalled. And if I'm honest with you, I don't even recall getting him on loan in the first place. So um, we don't really care about him going, but I did care about Roger Martinez going because he was a good player to bring off the bench. What this means though, is that we are now down to absolute bare bones in the squad. Uh, we've literally only got 19 players left. What this does show is that you have to play your loan players. If you say you're going to play them, you've got to play them. It's not like FM20 where you could just get anyone in and say you're going to be their star player and then just not play them. They actually do get recalled in this, which is a bit annoying. Luckily, it is the 1st of January, as you can see, which means that some players are going to be joining the club very shortly. We've got, of course, Hernando, who's coming back in on loan after he got recalled from earlier on this season. And then we've got another guy coming in from Real Madrid. But in more pressing matters, I want to talk about some contracts that need to be renewed. Now, there's a few players here, as you can see, who have... Uh, very important to the club and need a new contract. We'll start off with, I guess, Raul Jr. He needs a new contract because he is one of the uh, top, well, he's the top scorer at the club. He's fantastic, really, really good. The issue is, I'm a bit scared because he's got such good potential, he won't want to sign a new contract with us. So let's go to contracts, offer a new one. He wants to be an important player. Okay, he wants to stay at the club, negotiate. Okay, he wants quite a small contract on a three-year deal. That that works perfectly. Seasonal landmark goals are fine. If he scores that amount of goals, he can have that kind of money. Let's get rid of this promotion wage rise and unused substitute fee. An international cap bonus of £30. It will mount up over time over three years. So let's leave it in for now because we've already taken out some stuff that he's probably going to get quite cross about. Um, minimum fee release clause. This has got to go up to at least... Uh, I think he's, he keeps rejecting contracts of like two and a half mil. So let's go for 1.5, which he's happy to stick with if he goes up to £350 a week. Can we move us up to 2 million? Suggest he's happy with. We'll do it for now, but that minimum fee release clause might be a bit small still. Kike supposedly got a one-year extension clause in his contract, which 
I'm just going to trigger right now so he stays at the club for another year. Although he is on the decline a little bit, I must say. He's gone from like four stars to three stars. And I know that's not obviously indicative of how good he actually is for stars. That seems to change a lot with form. But he has been in form all season and... I'm getting a little worried about it. He's also going to be missing from both games in today's episode because he's playing for the Philippines currently in the uh, Asian Cup against uh, Australia, Iraq and Kuwait. So won't be available to play in today's episode. Martel Taylor Crossdale, of course, another player that we need to get signed up, although he'll want a very big contract. He's on a thousand pound a week at the moment, Martel Taylor Crossdale. And he's, he's slowly adapted, to be fair. Only got four goals in the league this season, seven overall. That's actually terrible, isn't it? That's really bad. Maybe we leave it a little longer with Martel Taylor Crosdale. Maybe. As much as I want to keep him, the returns we're getting for the money we're paying for him aren't great. And on a new contract, he wants to be an important player. Uh, let's move him to a regular starter, which he's happy with, but contract wise, he wants more money. If I can get this down to 800 or something like that get rid of that promotion wage rise yearly wage rise unused substitute fee move that minimum fee release clause up to about 250k he is getting cross he's not getting enough money how about 850 1k okay we're getting somewhere now 900 he's agreed on so he's taken a pay cut to stay at the I think that's a good deal. And then, of course, Dobrievic want to get him signed up as well. Mustafa Yaya, I'll reserve judgment for right now. The same with Joachim Gabalondo and Kian Ronan and Kenneth Cipollina. I'll reserve judgment on those guys for now. But Marco Dobrievic, I want him to get a new contract as well. He wants to be a star player. Important player, lad. Be an important player. Let's get rid of these other promises that he wants. Important player. He's happy to be that. Thing is, what kind of a contract does he want? He wanted a big one. He wanted £650 or more, but I got rid of that in his negotiation thing, so maybe he doesn't want that. I don't know. Either way, let's, just as a ballpark, let's put this down for him, see what he says. He wants nearly £1,000 a week on a three-year deal. Fair enough. What I want to do then is get your minimum free release clause up to £2.5 million, son. If we can do that and get this down to £750, I'm happy to talk to you. He's happy to talk as well, but on a bit more money. 750 again, lad. Let's do that. He's got big appearance at fees and clean sheet bonuses, but he's an important player, still young with potential. Suggest that term. He's agreed to it. Okay. I th it's a big pay rise, a huge pay rise, but I think he's worth it. I think Marco Dobrievic is worth it, particularly he's got Spanish second division pro. And it's only a division above us potential wise, isn't it? Okay, maybe not quite as good potential as I thought he was going to have, but Marco, you're an important asset to the club. We love you. We want you to stay, so accept the contract. Whilst I think about young players and potential, we actually had the youth intake preview come through the other day as well, as you can see. It's an excellent group of players coming through, not quite a golden generation, but uh, we've got some good fullbacks, a good goalkeeper, two top prospects in the centre of midfield. Uh, one of them from Gibraltar has caught the eye. Great, you love to see it. Most strikers look terrible, which is fine. We've already got some good strikers coming through. Most attacking midfielders look terrible because it doesn't really matter too much. We don't use attacking midfielders at the moment. No wide midfielders, good, because we don't have any wide midfielders in play in our formation right now. All wing backs, so it's kind of all right. Oh no, there's a healthy number of full backs. Lots of them coming through. It just says that they're all terrible. So we're looking for some good centre mids, a good goalkeeper, and that's that's about it maybe. In the meantime, we've got a couple of days before this Getafe game where David and Harano join the club. David is one of these players coming in on loan. You'll get to meet him in a moment's time. I've been doing plenty of research on players who we could get in on loan. And we've got some very reliable reports on a lot of players right now. So Pablo, it's not, I was going to say Gonzalez. Gonzalez instead is a striker, attacking midfielder or centre mid. Like it looks perfect, doesn't it? He looks absolutely fantastic. The thing is, I think Valencia will want a lot of money per week for him. In fact, they want no money for him because they want him to play with higher quality players. So let's ignore Pablo. Maybe if we get promoted, he's a player that can come in for us next season. Pal Victor would be good to get him, but he's more of an attacking midfielder, which we don't really use. We do use centre mids though. And this guy, Samuel Masia, also of Valencia, could be one to bring in as well to just boost the numbers. He's happy to come in on loan. They want us to pay 10% of his wages, which is only £300 a week, but they want him playing as a CDM. Now let's get rid of that and let's say squad player as well. And they're going to reject that, aren't they? They want him defensive mid. No, let's reject that. We want him, if anything, centre mid. Let's suggest centre mid. They say CDM. Centre mid. Lock it in, please. But they want to pay 30% of his wages if we do that. Um, and if I'm honest with you, 
I'm I'm not sure we can do that. I mean, we can do that, but I'd rather I'd rather not do that. Can we push this back down, lad, to 10%? Lock it in. Suggest, and they just reject everything. Okay. Didn't want him anyway, really, did we? Didn't want him anyway. I'm joking. I really wanted him. I might go back into him later on. Just 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 pay the money, maybe. This chap, though, Pau from uh, Real Madrid Castilla, is an attacking midfielder slash centre mid who also looks particularly good. Real Madrid, how much would you like? Only 10% apparently as an attacking midfielder, though. Can we make you a centre mid? How about centre mid instead? And they say, no, you can have you can have him for 20%. How about if we lock it in, they'll say 30 Well, no, they don't. They say 20% of his wages, centre mid, regular starter, which he probably will be. He looked like a good player, so let's try and bring him in too. Loans seem to be the best option for us right now because they're cheap-ish and they are better quality than the players that are free transfers. Obviously, we don't want to rely on loan players and to be fair, we haven't because the f four of our five loan players from January or the start of the season, sorry, have been recalled, which means we haven't been relying on them, have we? And obviously, the team we've got right now are top of the table. It's not like we need to make too many additions, but I think getting extra quality in is only going to make us better. So it's the 4th of January now uh, and the transfer window... So it's the 4th of January now, the transfer window has reopened and George Horando is back. He's back after a couple of months off, basically. As you can see, he's um, he played five games, played really, really well, and then they thought that's not enough games, so they recalled him. Oh, no, it wasn't enough games. It was because we were playing him in the wrong role. The wrong role. We've got rid of that this time. We've got him as a ball-playing defender now, so he's happy to play at the club for that. So welcome back, George. Uh, glad to have you here again. You're a very, very good player, so thank you. We've also got David in on loan as well. He is a centre midfielder from Real Madrid. Just another player to sort of add to our midfield trio to sort of rotate and help us out a little bit. He'll swap with Randy quite a lot because Randy needs a bit of rest every now and again and this guy is an advanced playmaker so it works quite well. Jerónio wants to trial Anthony Ward, not a chance, he is not going anywhere. And whilst I think about it as well, I need to bring a player up from the B team. It was, uh, who were we thinking of bringing in? Jez Finley, that was the one, the centre back to sort of help us out a little bit. I think we just needed someone else in there to just help us with some cover at the back. And Jez Finley was the guy from last episode. We tried to bring up, but we couldn't because the transfer window is in the way. The transfer window is not in the way now. So development moved to the Lincoln senior squad. The B team, by the way, are currently in third in the division by quite a long stretch. So come the end of the season, I think we will actually find out if they go into European football or not. Right, so this is the line that we've got for today's game against Getafe. We've got Anthony Ward in goal as per usual with that back line of Eusebio Monzo, Lopez, Dobrievic and Kian Ronan. Shitty Gel and Chipolina start in the midfield alongside new signing David who comes in to replace Randy Schneider who cannot play today against his parent club. Rather frustrating. And then of course up front we've got uh, Raul, Taylor Crosdale and Oninho Jr. because of course Kike on international break. So arguably our two best players out of the squad for this one which is a little bit annoying but we're going to give Getafe a good game today and see what we can do. Now of course this isn't our first foray against a La Liga club. In season one when we were in Gibraltar we played, I think it was Granada we played against in one of the Europa League qualifying games and obviously lost that one. Very narrowly though, very narrowly. Last season we got to this stage of the competition we played against Abar and lost to them I think only 1-0 and this season uh, Getafe have gone 1-0 ahead of us in 16 minutes so not ideal. Of course we're not really expected to win this game I thought it'd be a good game to show either way though because obviously storyline with Randy Schneider and obviously it's a great big attendance for us at home hopefully we should sell the stadium out and make a nice bit of money off this one uh, at the very minimum of course although the stadium only holds about 2,000 people so it's not huge amounts of money. I'll be interested when we get to the stage where potentially a new stadium could happen as Martel Taylor Crosdale that's why he deserves a new contract because he can do things like that on his day he is absolutely phenomenal. I was talking to someone actually in the stream the other day. Uh, we stream every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Link down in the description to twitch.tv slash TomFM if you want to follow me on there. Uh, but we spoke about Telecrossdale and how actually his adaptability, which is one of the in-game hidden attributes, uh, must be terrible because he plays so, so well in England in our Gateshead stream. He got 44 goals in one season, like absolutely ridiculous. He just can't adapt to life in Spain or Gibraltar particularly well. So I think his in-game adaptability is terrible and that seems to be the issue for him as we instantly go back down to 2-1. Obviously not quite ideal. 
So, half time, Lincoln 1, Getafe 2. A lot close. Well, the scoreline's a lot closer than I thought it would be. If you look at the, the match stats, it's not particularly close at all. Uh, I'm going to thrash my arms around and say I'm far from pleased from what I've just seen. See if we can G the boys up a little bit. Obviously, we're 2 1 down to a La Liga side. We're not really having many shots. Basically, we've just got to. We've got nothing to lose. Let's go attacking. Let's say demand more out there and let's see if we can take the game to Getafe or are they taking it to us as Mark Cucurella who is a fantastic wonder kid in the game puts a cross into the middle it's offside by a mile though so that's not going to count Mark Cucurella he's a he's a throwback he is to the uh, Real Oviedo days that the Real Deal if you remember that save Lopez on the ball for us though as he gets it out wide to uh, Eusebio Monzo shitty Joe with the ball forward to absolutely no one Andre better than that better than that as it's led to a goal for good Ugh, you hate to see it it's worse when it's players like Shitty Gel that give the ball away stupidly like that. Because Shitty Gel, he's, he's, he's like a brother to me, really. In, in many respects, he is my brother. Or a, in many respects, also a father to me, in many ways. Uh, and also a son. All, all of them, basically. He just has different roles in my life constantly. And when he makes mistakes like that, that's when it really upsets me, I must say. You know, because he's, he's better than that. We know he is. And we, we know... Oh, it's disallowed again. Luckily, luckily... It's 3-1 on the night, but it could easily be a lot more, I must say, with some of the goals they've had disallowed uh, by very close margins. Is there a chance for us, though, to get ourselves back in? This is new signing David whipped one into Raul Jr. Maybe there is a chance for us at the end of this game. It's 3-2 now. I was about to make some changes, but I've just seen the highlight come up before I click the change button. Is there going to be a third goal for us? Come on, boys. Let's do this for Randy Schneider. Kian Ronan on the ball. Come on. Forward to no one, too much on that pass. Okay, I'm a bit scared now. I might make the changes now and just try not to witness a Getafe goal. Please, Gabriel Barros coming forward. It's a good save. Right, I will make changes now because, uh, unfortunately, David is a bit tired. Let's get him off the pitch for Mustafa Yaya, who isn't really a playmaker, but we're going to give him a go as that. Um, the issue is, everyone on the bench right now is a defender because it's literally all we have right now. Kian Ronan, off you come for... Uh, Gabalondo, and then we'll bring Brito on for Monzo at, at wing-back positions. Come on, lads. We're going to go very attacking. We're going to say fire up. We're going to give it everything we've got for these final five minutes of the game. Come on, let's get an equaliser. I believe in us. I believe that we're... <laughs> that we're not going to do it. Oh, you hate to see it. To be fair, I must say, I think we've given a good account of ourselves there. To lose 3-2 to La Liga side Getafe when we're a fourth tier side, I must say, we've done well. I think we can certainly hold our heads high with that result. I think we, I think we had a good impression there. 2,202 turned up for that game. Is that about the, the stadium capacity? What is our stadium capacity? 2,226, so almost. You know what the worst bit about this screen is? The worst bit about this screen is this little green dot here behind my head where it says we got promoted. We didn't get promoted. We won the league, just didn't get promoted. I was actually looking at this the other day. There have been a few occasions where teams have done well and not got promoted. I mean, Cartagena won it one year, came second the next year, then won it the year afterwards and only got promoted this year because I think everyone else got promoted pretty much. So Cartagena had three attempts of getting promoted. All no. All no. Sabadell have offered a contract to Marco Dobrievic. What division are they in? Oh, they're in. They are. Oh, he's leaving, isn't he? He's going. He's not. He's not turning down a second division side, is he? Oh no. We can discuss this with him to make a quicker decision. Um, what's up? He says. Can you come to decision your contract renewal so we can move forward as a club, please? I'm not in a position to rush such a big decision in my career, Marco. He's, he feels let down as well. His agent's confrontational. I've made a big mistake talking to him, if I'm honest with you. Um, do I just back down? Or what do, I, what do I do? Maybe I just say, we've given you a generous offer. Uh, it doesn't matter if you think it's generous. Oh, God. He, he, he doesn't think it's generous. He's leaving, isn't he? He is he's certainly leaving. Um, I, I'll leave it up to you, lad. I'll leave it up to you. I thought I, oh, this could be the last we're ever going to see of Marco. I'll be honest, I didn't think they could offer a contract until a month before it was up. I thought it was only internationally they could offer six months before. I guess I'm all wrong, aren't I? I'm going to put some more money in there for him. I can't put... Why can't I put more money in there for him? Um, I can't, apparently. I can take it down. I just can't take anything... Let's ignore it. Kadith and Getafe, though, they want Anthony Wall, but they're offering pennies. Absolute pe Literally, five million or nothing, lads. That's what it is. I'm 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 pretty broken about Marco, actually. You know, we love Marco. He's a beautiful man. I can't believe he... 
Surely he's going to take. Surely he's going to take the uh, the contract elsewhere. As Anthony Ward now wants to go to Getafe. Andre, can you sort this mess out for me, please? I need you, Dad. Please, Dad, sort it out. He, he can't. Even Dad can't sort it out. Let's have a chat with him then, and let's just say you've got a minimum free release clause. He says he can't wait. I need Getafe to to put a bid in now. They might lose interest, and I'll say I'll, I'll offer you out. I promise you, I will offer you out. You know, but I'm going to offer you out for five million pounds, lad. Five mil, take it or leave it. Also with a, uh, where is it? A percentage of next sale, 50%. Take it or leave it, locking those in. At least Crosdale is signing his new contract. Thank you, Taylor Crosdale. You know, it's on a cheaper deal as well. You love to see it. Same as Raul Jr. He signed his new contract. We offered all the contracts on the same day as well. And guess who's not signed a contract yet? Of course, Marco Dobrievic. He's leaving, isn't he? He's not coming back. In the meantime, it's time to take on Merida in the league. I feel like today's episode is quite a long one, but justifiably so, I must say. Uh, David has picked up a knock and isn't quite fit to play, so he can swap with Randy Schneider. He can just come straight back into the squad. Harando, all right, lad. Let's let's swap you with Dobrievic. If Dobrievic is going to leave the club, he needs to clear his head right now and just sort of focus on contracts. So we're going to give him a rest for this game, and Harando will come on instead. Other than that, I don't really feel a need to change anything else. So we'll leave it as it is, submit the team, and go to the game. So as kickoff is upon us, it looks like we're a late kickoff because we were top of the table. Uh, we're now second. So I guess Almeria B must have won a game earlier on or the day before or something like that. So uh, they've got the three points. They've caught up with us. Well, they've gone one point ahead of us technically, but we're drawing this game right now. So we are level on points as it stands and stay in second place. Of course, we lost to Almeria last episode as Raul Jr. puts us 1-0 up. Suspicions of offside there, but I guess not. We'll see it on the replay if it was or not, but uh, that puts us back two points clear of Almeria, so the fight for the title is still on. Onino, I, ooh, I'm i not sure we couldn't really see that very well, but I think really that could have been offside. Oh, we'll see it now, won't we? We'll see it now. He's, I tell you what, very, very, very lucky that's not offside. Very lucky. If we can double our lead before half time, though, we'll be sitting very, very comfortable to pick up all three points today as the ball forward is a good one to Raul, who takes it round the keeper. But that is a superb last ditch challenge from Chato at the back. Is that the same Chato we tried to sign? There was a Chato we tried to sign uh, in, in pre season on. Was it loan? I don't think it was. I think it. I'll be honest with you, I've not got a clue if it was this guy or not. If we had him on trial, I don't know, I can't remember. But we had a guy on trial called Chatter who wanted to sign, but he wanted a lot of money per week, so it could have been him. But can't be that many people called Chatto around, surely. So I guess it must be. Either way, half time, wander up, uh, you love to see it. Free kick for us, Andre Shitty Gel stands over the ball, and Andre Shitty Gel, for only his second goal of the season, puts that absolutely top bins. What a fantastic free kick this one is. Andre, take a... It's not quite top bins, actually. Looking at this angle, the keeper palms it into the back of the net. But we don't mind. Unless it happens against us, like it did last season with uh, with Chino in goal, and then we sack the keeper. So, you know, it's good job he's not our keeper, otherwise he'd be sacked. 25 minutes or so to go. Let's give Jez Finley his debut at the back for Bernardo Lopez. And let's also bring Scipio onto the pitch for Michael Cipollina. And let's also not make any more substitutes. Tempted to try and get a wing back or two on loan this uh, transfer window. Uh, you'll see that our wing backs always have really low ratings. And I guess a lot of that is, is down to them having a lot of work to do. Basically, they're the only wide players that we've got in this formation. So there is a lot of work for them to do. But I'd at least expect them to get a 6.9 rating on average. I think all our wing backs that we keep rotating, there's about four that we keep rotating. None of them have a very high average rating across all their games. So I'm tempted to bring someone else in, but... I don't know if bringing someone else in is going to do any better, really. Ten minutes ago, though, and we are comfortably winning this game 2-0. It puts us top of the table once again, uh, with two points clear of uh, Almeria, as the title fight looks to continue between us two for the title. There's Onino Jr. crosses it into Raul Jr. Another goal, 23rd of the season for Raul Jr. His second of the game as well. And the three goals today wrap up 
the three points. Very pleased with that one. Very, very pleased with that one. A superb result and a great way to bounce back from that loss to a La Liga side. So all in all, all things considered, I think it's it's not a, not a bad episode, I must say. Yes, we might be nearly a million pounds in the red now. That's quite bad. But if we just ignore it, it's, it'll go away. I think next episode, uh, we go through towards the end of March, just because that's when the Youth Intake Regen Day is. I think that'd be good to do next episode to see the young players coming through. And then after that episode, we go through to the final few games of the season. And then if we're still in the top three, Sunday, we'll have uh, the playoffs again. And hopefully not, not bottled on this time so thank you so much for watching today's episode hope you guys have enjoyed it and of course if you have done drop a like on the video for me subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and i will see you next time have a good one goodbye